Hello, and welcome to Two and a Half Beards. I'd like you to know at the outset of this video that it's my intention that Two and a Half Beards will continue, even if it's only one video a week. And for this video, week's video, I would like to talk actually in some way about last week's video, which is that there wasn't one, and about how difficult it can be to do things sometimes. For example, Two and a Half Beards has greatly increased in difficulty for me um, what I might call, or others might call, the entry difficulty of doing it. That is, to begin on the task. Um, once I start recording the video and getting my thoughts together and practicing it and doing a couple different revisions and writing out my notes, it's not so tough. But it's the very act of sitting down and starting to record the video that I find difficult. And that has increased in part because my the regularity of my videos has not been entirely there. Also, I haven't seen any new videos from Kurt or Christopher in a while. And uh, you know, when we have something that can that holds us to turning something in, to completing something, to finishing something, to talking to someone, to making that appointment, to whatever, when we have something that's physical or even better, social or emotional, a relationship with someone, whereby we know that they will know if we succeed or fail to hold up our end of the bargain, it's much easier for us to follow through with that. And when I forgot to do this video, what I realized so often happens to me is that I get very close to doing what I want to do and I just don't take that one last step that will get me through to finishing it. For example, with 2.5 beards, uh, generally I write out my notes during the week, I think a lot about what I want to say, and then recently, Wednesday has come and no video. Why? Well, again, it goes back to what I said, where I think that if there's some kind of pact or expectation, we have a much easier time. But another reason is simply because of energy. It's commonly accepted now in many circles that willpower is a limited resource. That is, when you exert yourself to do something, it becomes more difficult to do other things for which you might have to exert yourself. I'm going to read today a little bit from an article in the December 2013 issue of Newsweek, which is a pretty good, used to be a really great, wait, is this Newsweek? Yeah, it's Newsweek. It used to be a good magazine, and then it, like, I don't know, five years ago or something, it got kind of not so good. In any case, it has a good articles sometimes, and this is one of them. <clears throat> and it's an article about New Year's resolutions. It's called, The New Year's Resolution That Won't Fail You. There it is. <laughs> and one of the things they mention in here, I'm just going to read parts of this. So, they say, the evidence suggests that willpower is a depletable resource. The more of it you use making one change, the less you'll have left over to make others. Pushing yourself to exercise leaves you more susceptible to burgers, not less. I have come upon this idea somewhat independently in my own life. I have this idea of what I call will-positive actions, which are, uh-oh, something's going on. Okay, got it. Will-positive actions, which are things that leave you with more willpower to accomplish other things, and will negative actions, which are actions that um, perhaps are so indulgent or decadent or wrong that uh, when I say wrong, I mean going against natural cycles or what you f need for your physical or emotional or social health that leave you depleted. So for example, um, eating well, getting rest, and being emotionally connected with other people are pretty much always will positive actions. That is, if I'm feeling down, I can bet, pretty much bet, that if I spend, the energy spent to go out and see a friend will be repaid double or triple or quadruple, and it will be worth it to spend that energy, even if I don't feel like I have that much to spend. Conversely, if, for example, I'm feeling crappy, and I decide that the best way to assuage that crappiness is to stay up until 2 o'clock in the morning playing video games, that gives me a little hit of joy, of this kind of free-spiritedness of being bad, going against the schedule. I'm um, very conservative in that way, obviously. I, I feel like a rebel when I stay up late. But it's not going to make me feel very good in the morning, and the day after, and the day after, probably. It's a will-negative choice. And 
we're just about out of time, but the reason I'm bringing this up, I want to read this one last quotation for you, which is that the Buddhist-influenced Japanese psychologist Shoma Morita liked to point out that people get caught up in trying to feel motivated to do things rather than just doing them. What he says is, consequently, their mental energy is wasted by their impossible attempts to avoid feelings of displeasure or boredom. Morita advised his readers and patients to give up on themselves, to begin taking action now, while being neurotic or imperfect or a procrastinator or unhealthy or lazy or any other label by which you inaccurately describe yourself. So, that's my thought for today. I'd like to continue this in next week's video, and I look forward to seeing you then.